Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Karen Venter is training us on how to accelerate our business growth by creating and running mastermind groups. Karen, I've got a few questions uh, for you that'll help us get to know you, not as a professional trainer, but as a human being. First question is, what would you classify as your greatest accomplishment? Oh, that was something very special for me. Um, I do some work in India, where I have been until all this craziness started um, a year or so ago. And I've been working in India since 2015 on and off. So as you know, I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. So I would travel to India a few times a year doing some work for the UN. I'm a UN trainer. And um, we just completed a workshop in Delhi. And we were told by the organizers that there was a something um, that they'd set up at the UN headquarters in Delhi and we would all need to be there. So, you know, I just thought this was a graduation for the participants, which is nothing unusual, but quite a prestigious um, venue to be at the UN headquarters. And of course it was a graduation, but more than that, I actually also received an award and um, completely unexpectedly, I received a hero award. And if anybody here uh, speaks Hindi, they will know that hero means a diamond award. And it was presented to me by the Minister of Commerce and Aviation of India. So um, that was really something very, very special for my contribution to entrepreneurship in India. So it was a special moment. <laughs> Ah, beautiful. So not only are you an angel, but you're also a hero. A hero, but a hero and a hero. <laughs> oh, hero. hero. Okay, great. So second question, what's one of your favorite quotes and why? Um, you know, I really love somebody called Alexander Den Heyer. He is an inspirational speaker. Um, some of you may have heard of him. I think he's fairly well known. Um, a Dutch inspirational speaker, and he's also an author. And his work really touches me and really, I really feel it in my heart. But there's one particular quote of his that I, I just love because it resonates with me so much. And he says, to inspire people, you should show them, no, to inspire people, you shouldn't show them your superpower, you should show them theirs. And for me, this really touches me because in my work, whether it's working with the UN or my work as a coach on my own, um, it's really important to me to help people access their potential because I think this is such a super powerful thing, accessing your potential and to be able to really become the very best version of themselves. So that is a quote that just speaks to me. Beautiful. And your third and final question, what is your favorite way of relaxing? My very favorite way of relaxing is hiking on the mountain. So we're very lucky here in Cape Town, the mountain. And when I say the mountain, Table Mountain or Lion's Head, they're quite famous, um, are about a 14 kilometer drive from where I live. They're right in the center of the city here. It's not like the mountains are outside and, and we have to travel. So it's really super. I love, love, love mountain hiking. Great. Participants, uh, if you have questions, please type them into the chat. Uh, I'll batch them and together pose them to Karen during the course of her workshop. Now, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours, but I still encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Karen, are you ready to rock the stage? I absolutely am. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> then over to you. Good luck. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining. I know it's quite early in your part of the world. It's 7 p.m. here, but I know it's kind of 10 p.m. and maybe even earlier in some places. So thank you so much for joining uh, this workshop and I hope that there is a lot that you get out of this that you can put to, to use in your businesses and in your lives. So just to kind of take you on a journey for a moment, I'd like you to imagine 
as business people, because I know everybody here is a, is a business person, that as a business person, how would it feel if you were part of a group of people who were like-minded, people who wanted to move in the same direction as you and people who could support you on your journey, give you advice, um, people who could guide you, uh, where you had an opportunity when you have a challenge that you could actually approach them and you weren't all alone in the problem because I know that this for us as entrepreneurs and particularly kind of solopreneurs, it can be quite a lonely world. So just imagine that situation. And now imagine as a business person that you were the person facilitating that journey for other entrepreneurs. So you were initiating the group. Um, it's such a wonderful opportunity for others to join and also for you as a, a, an entrepreneur, you may be a coach or you may be in, in some other field of work, but it's an amazing opportunity for you to grow. First of all, it's a new income stream for your business. And I always, as a business coach, encourage people, don't have just one revenue stream in your business because we never know when things are gonna get quiet in one area, they may be busier in another area. So always make sure that you have more than one income stream if you can. And so this could be, has the potential to be another income stream for you. And of course, on top of that, when you are dealing with and interacting with like-minded people, you're sure to learn new things as well. You may be the expert in, in your field because you are the person initiating the group and running it. But um, even as experts, we always have a lot to learn. Growth is part of life. So there's a growth opportunity for you in that area as well. Um, so let's dive in and learn more about what mastermind groups really are all about and what's in it for you today. So what's in it for you is the following. Um, I'm going to go through understanding masterminds. I think that there's a lot of confusion around what mastermind groups actually are and what they aren't. Um, people call a lot of things masterminds, different trainings, etc. Those are not masterminds, but we're going to go through that. So what they are and then what they are not so that you have real clarity in that area. We'll talk about some group ideas because masterminds are not only limited to business settings, it can be something that you use for personal growth as well. So that's something we're gonna chat about and then how to set up your mastermind group and what is your role as a facilitator. So that is basically what we're gonna to cover today. Um, and it will be a good enough overview for you to be able to see, yes, this is something I think I can do and something that I feel I would really love to do because you've got to really want to do this. Um, or, well, I'd like to be part of this, but maybe I don't want to have my own. So this will give you a great idea and you'll have some ideas. If it makes you feel impassioned, by the end of this, you should start, your mind should start thinking about ideas. Mm, how could I apply this and, and what could I do in this area? So what is a mastermind? It's a group of like-minded people who meet on a regular basis to support one another's growth. Mastermind groups provide you with innovative solutions through collaboration and diversity. So in other words, in a mastermind group, although you may initiate a group and run a group, and there's an amount of work, obviously, that you need to put in to do that. But you're not always the person who is giving advice, unlike coaching. If you're coaching, you're the person advising. Um, in this setting, you're leading. But actually, all of the um, advice and input, or most of it, is coming from everybody in the group. So it's using everybody's diverse set of knowledge and skills to empower the entire group, which is really a wonderful thing. It's an, it's an opportunity for people to hear many different points of view. When they come with a problem or a challenge, they can have so much input from each person that is completely diverse. 
which is wonderful. So it is a real opportunity for growth, not only for you as the facilitator, but for those who are part of the group. Um, and this is where kind of innovative solutions come from, because when you get into a situation where you're able to brainstorm and have input from many different people, of course, this really stimulates your thinking and gives you many options as a business person. And I mean, as business people, who doesn't want that and who doesn't need that? We all need that kind of support. This just really belonging to a mastermind group um, or even running a mastermind group would really accelerate your growth as an entrepreneur. If you find yourself weak in persistence, surround yourself with a mastermind group, Napoleon Hill said. So he was the first one to write about uh, mastermind groups in his book, which I'm sure most of you have heard of, Think and Grow Rich. And um, he was really the person who kind of coined the phrase, but masterminds had been around for some time. And in fact, um, somebody very famous who was part of a mastermind group was Henry Ford. And his mastermind peers were Harvey Firestone and Thomas Edison. I mean, imagine being part of that group. There must have been some in incredible ideas. I can just, you know, imagine that. So people have realized for many years that this is a really important component, having support and being able to hash things out with others and belonging to a mastermind group, it definitely accelerates your um, journey to achieving your goals. And you'll see how that works as we go through this. It increases your chances of achieving your goals by 75%, which I think is quite, it's quite significant. And as I say, as we go through this, you'll see why, why that is. Um, I was on a, a coaching program some time ago. So I had my own coach. I'm a coach and I had my own coach, but it was a program. So it came to an end at a certain point. And I was very, very, very lucky that I had my own mastermind group that I had joined as a participant and been a part of that I could actually fall back on. And this made all the difference in the world to me because I'd always kind of had the comfort or for some time I'd had the comfort of my coach kind of guiding me and when I had a problem I could chat to him about it and I was so lucky that I could transition into a supported environment with my group and my group are absolutely amazing I mean they mean more to me than just a mastermind group in fact I, I can tell you this I'll share a secret with you all <laughs> somebody from my mastermind group is actually sitting in on this training now so that is how we just all kind of fall in and support one another and it's really a wonderful thing to know that you have people in your corner and um, in your camp no matter what happens Okay, so let's have a look at this and what is a mastermind group? So a mastermind group is to help one another in different areas, of course, solve problems. So as I said, when you have a problem um, as a participant, when one would have a problem, they would bring it to the group and each person in the group would offer a solution or each person who has a solution will offer a solution. So you may hear, Let's say, for example, um, the group has six people in. You would hear five in input from five different people, plus from you as the facilitator of the group. Um, it helps you gain clarity in decision making. Uh, we always like to bounce ideas off people, and sometimes we are not sure what direction to take as entrepreneurs, and we kind of don't really have anyone to talk to about it. So this really helps in that area to strategize effectively and it will help people to achieve their goals. Uh, because you feel supported, um, because there's an accountability component, which we're going to talk about next, this really kind of catapults entrepreneurs forward on their journey. So accountability is a very important part of a mastermind group. In fact, if you 
are part of a mastermind group that does not have an accountability component or you're not being held or people are not being held accountable, um, I'm not sure how effective that's going to be. Um, the accountability component of this is important because people need to sometimes have a little bit of a kind of push, you know, it's it's embarrassing to show up every week to your meeting if you're having weekly meetings and to have to contribute. Um, well, actually, I didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve last week. And I guess it's okay when that happens once, but if this is happening consistently week after week, it becomes embarrassing. So as soon as there's an accountability component, one does feel <laughs> um, more motivated to actually achieve what you've said you're going to achieve. Um, a mastermind group is usually run by a trained facilitator with facilitation skills who is an expert in the topic. So not so much that, you know, I say be a trained facilitator and that really helps because it is a facilitation process, but I think that this is a skill that can be learned so if you're not a trained facilitator, this doesn't exclude you from starting your own mastermind group. Don't let that put you off because you can learn those kind of communication skills if you need to. Erin, um, are you open to your first two questions? I sure am. Okay. I sure, should I finish the slide quickly? Um, yep. Rod, and then we and then let's let's do it. Okay. So um, also be an expert in your topic, but that we'll talk about actually um, in an upcoming slide. And then um, the last point that I have here is a commitment of six to 12 months. You know, this isn't the most important thing. Some mastermind groups go on for years, to be honest with you. It depends on you, it depends on the topic, and it depends on your goal for that particular mastermind group. Okay, Roger. I'm happy to hear some questions. Uh, Dylan asks, how do we select our mastermind peers being like-minded yet to have them selected from different areas of expertise? Okay, so Dylan, actually that's something that I'm going to talk about and cover. And if it mm. doesn't, once I get to it, if that doesn't answer your question, please will you raise this with me again if it's not answer to your satisfaction. Super, thank you. And by the way, Dylan, when I saw your name come up, I thought maybe it's my son sitting in because my son is Dylan. And then <laughs> I saw, of course, it's not. But thank you for your question. We'll, we'll get on top of it, Dylan. Second question is, how do you deal with a mastermind member who transpires to be really disruptive? Um, yes, I mean, that is part of your role as the facilitator. And one of the ways to do that is you would set up ground rules in the beginning and um, you know one has to let the participants know that if they are not willing to um, stick to the ground rules and there is a i don't want to call it it's not a misdemeanor that's not the word but I, the right word's not coming to me but it, you know if they are going to be breaking the rules um over and over that they're going to have to be asked to leave the group. So um, I would talk to them privately, uh, not necessarily in front of the group, you know, do that in private and just have a discussion with them and find out uh, whether there's a problem, like try and get to the bottom of it instead of just, um, just saying this is just a disruptive person, like try and find out what the reason is and uh, take it from there, but do that in a one-on-one -on -one forum, not in front of the group. Thank you, Karen, no further questions. Super, thank you. Okay, doke, so what is a mastermind group not? It is not a training workshop. As I said to you before, a lot of people think, you know, they give a training or an online training and they say, I'm doing a mastermind. That is not a mastermind that is a training workshop and it's something completely different. As I said to you, your mastermind group is really, although it's run by you, um, most of the input is coming from the other group members. It is not group coaching. 
So group coaching would be a scenario where, um, say, for example, I'm the coach and each one of you um, is part of the group. Um, I would talk to each one of you individually, but with the whole group present. That's group coaching. So you may pick up some um, golden nuggets that I share with somebody else, but I'm directing that part of the conversation to them, then I'll move on to you. Um, a mastermind group, as I said, is not me coaching you, but it's actually you all coaching one another or mentoring one another in a sense. And then it's not a networking or sales group. And I kind of say that a little bit, you know, it's not networking, but it is. Your purpose, so to, just to clarify that, your purpose for being there, um, the purpose for starting is not networking. It's support and guidance. Um, networking will be a consequence for sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. As I said to you, I network with the people in my group. Um, that's almost a natural consequence, but that's not the reason for being in a mastermind group. And it's most definitely not a sales group. You are not going to be selling um, to your peers in this group. That would be very uncomfortable and would really break the trust that, um, that you're trying to set up or you as a facilitator wouldn't, wouldn't allow sales in the group. Okay, and then some group ideas. There are so, so, so many things that you can do with a mastermind group. Um, generally, I know a lot of people think about it as a business support. And the way I've talked about it is probably as a business support, because that's also my area of expertise. But honestly, the number of things that you can do with a mastermind group or the number of topics you can cover in a mastermind group are absolutely limitless. It could be, you could be an expert in health and wellness, for example, and run a mastermind group that's around health and wellness. And of course, that is something that is geared towards personal growth. So your mastermind group is all about growth, whether it's business growth or personal growth. Um, you may have a mastermind group that's around fitness. Um, there could be a mastermind group that's for authors. So as long as you all have something in common um, or you're working towards the same goal, this is what binds you together and really makes you a group is having peers, which we're gonna to come to. Um, it could be something like weight loss. And then on the business side, um, you could have a mastermind group that's all about leadership. Um, you could have business owners, small business owners in your group, or it could be geared towards specific professions like human resources, for example. So there may be people uh, who are um, all human resources specialists about working in different fields, but that is the, the commonality. So they may be working in different industries, but they're all HR uh, professionals. So I hope that that kind of just, just start thinking about what your area is. Like what is your area of passion and expertise? I think passion is really important as well when you are choosing a group, and we're going to talk about that. So what do members gain from being in the group? And there are just so many benefits, um, many, many, many. But to start off with, they get to unpack difficult challenges. And I think it's so cool as somebody who runs a mastermind group to be able to facilitate this environment, you know, for people to come and really unpack their challenges and know that they're not sitting with this heavy on their own and they're actually getting help and support. Um, for the members, this is for the members, of course. Um, they get to ask themselves tough questions. You know, sometimes as a business owner, it's hard to it's hard to ask ourselves those questions, but when you feel supported and, and you're in a group and, and you're kind of hashing things out, it's almost an easier environment. It's an environment that carries you and you can lean into that environment with your tough questions and they get to up their game and learn from others. And of course it keeps their business 
moving forward, as I explained to you before, with the accountability, and you're going to hear me talk about accountability over and over and over, with the accountability component, there's no way that you can't be moving forward as a business owner. Okay, so of course, here we go, accountability helps people to maintain focus, especially as a solo entrepreneur, very often people are you know, your mind is here and then your mind is there and you have this priority and then you're jumping from one thing to another. And I mean, I, I know what it's like. And it's not only in business, of course, as I said to you, masterminds are not only for business, they're for personal growth as well. So whichever area you're looking at, I think even though we're more confined to home than ever, we still have a lot of stuff going on. Um, and the accountability portion really helps people to maintain focus, whether that's on an area of health or whether it's business. Um, it's a community with a shared vision, and this is so important. We like to, it's human nature that we want to hang out with people who uh, have a shared vision with us. This is comfortable, it's safe, it's a good place. To, to talk about things that we need to talk about in relation to that vision. Um, it gives people the opportunity to get feedback and critical insights, you know. I like to think of it this way. If you think of a beautiful painting, just imagine, <clears throat> excuse me, the most beautiful painting um, with the most beautiful scenery, it's exquisite, and you are in the painting. And when you look around, you can only see a limited portion of what's in the painting. But if somebody else is standing on the outside of the painting and they're looking at the painting in front of them, they can see everything. And really, this is what I think the beauty of getting feedback from others is all about. When things are really close to us and close to our heart and our businesses are emotional, our personal growth is emotional. Whatever it is we're doing, our emotions are connected to that because it's our vision and it's what we want. Um, very often, critical insights and feedback from others can be less emotional and can be so much clearer. So this is really uh, a very supportive environment. It's your team to, to, to run ideas by. So if you don't have a team, your mastermind group is your team as, as, a, as a participant and you'll get fresh perspectives and ideas. And now, isn't this wonderful, you know, and be able to run your ideas past others because we all have a different perspective. It's so wonderful to get different perspective from others. Um, it allows participants to dig into ideas and goals and to have a trusted circle, a confidential space. So this is also something that's really important in a mastermind group. If you're going to facilitate a group is that there is a lot of trust in the space. People need to be able to come and talk about the things that they need to talk about, whether it's their business, you know, whether it's their business they're talking about or whether it's a health issue, whatever the group is about, they shouldn't feel afraid or embarrassed to talk about challenges that they're having. And it's a place where people can share and hear best practices and strategies. Sometimes there are best practices and strategies out there that we just haven't considered or haven't thought of. So this is a wonderful place just to get a most diverse set of ideas and strategies and best practices and a diverse set of just everything, which is wonderful. It's very stimulating. So we're gonna move on to setting up your mastermind group now. What is it that you have to do? What should you do? What are the steps that you need to take to set up a mastermind group? And the first thing I'd say to you is decide on a topic, of course, what is your kind of area? So if you have, if you're kind of sitting, listening to me and thinking, I have different areas of expertise or I have different areas of passion and they're, they're fairly diverse. Um, which one would I want to start a mastermind group on? Which one should I choose? You can ask yourself a couple of questions. Um, first of all, what is your goal and purpose for the group? 
who is your group for and why would people want to join and what I would do if I was you if you have a couple of ideas like you want to do something in the health field you want to do something in the business field you know and you have a couple of ideas write down your answers to these questions for each idea that you have and my suggestion is the one that lights you up and makes you feel excited and impassioned is the one that you should go for. And of course, there's also nothing stopping you from having two different mastermind groups. You know, if these are two areas you can handle, there's nothing stopping you from doing this. Um, usually you would be running a mastermind group in your area of expertise. It's your opportunity to share your knowledge and skills because although input is coming from everybody in the group, you are also, as the facilitator, giving input. So you're not just silently kind of just sitting behind the scenes. You're there and you're active in the group. So it's important that you're able to participate. Um, it's an opportunity for you to establish yourself as an expert in your field. So particularly when I think about the area of coaching, this is a really great opportunity to establish yourself as an expert. And of course, it's an opportunity to make more impact. Um, it's an incredibly, incredibly impactful, um, it's, an, it's a very impactful way of helping people. And then when it comes to the size of your group, uh, I would consider, first of all, your hot seat frequency um, I can't I can't see the bottom of my slides because <laughs> there's something cover, covering it. So I'm just going to tell you what, what I'm thinking. If it doesn't match up with the slide, it doesn't matter. Um, your hot seat frequency is something to take into consideration. So your hot seat is also a very critical part of your mastermind group. And we'll talk about that when we go on, you know, when we talk about the agenda. Um, your hot seat is where each person in the group gets to ask for help. So they come with a challenge, they present that to the group, and the group gives input on how to solve that challenge. And a hot seat, I wouldn't make it le less than 15 minutes in a group. So let's say, for example, your masterminds are an hour long. And again, this is totally up to you. It's up to the topic. It depends on the number of people you have in your group. It will depend on many things. Uh, but bearing in mind that when you set the duration for your mastermind group, you have to also consider how much time people have to set aside. So uh, let's say, for example, your mastermind group is an hour long. Um, let's say you have eight people in your group. That's, that's quite a fair-sized mastermind group. Um, that would mean if you're giving them 15 minutes each for the hot seat, you'd be able to have two hot seats a session, which means that everybody gets to have a hot seat session in the month. Of course, you can't fit everybody into one session in the hot seat. It would be great if you can. You know, if you make it longer, you, you can find a way around it, but generally that's not really possible. So the size of your group is really important. If you make your group too big, I think that people lose a lot because then you need to put people into breakout rooms and they're not really getting the benefit of your expertise in that area. So a very good number for mastermind group is kind of six to eight people. You can stretch it to 10, but that's quite big. So if you want to give the best experience and the most value to them, my advice is don't go too big. But again, this all depends on many variables. Okay, set a goal or intention. Um, this is really important so that everybody is moving in the same direction. You would tell people when you go through an orientation with them what your goal is or the intention for the mastermind group. Because, of course, you need to get by and you need to have everybody on the same page. And this is where it all begins. Um, is this really what you want to be working towards? So I've just given an example here. Honest, respectful feedback and accountability for brick and mortar business owners to accelerate 
and support growth in their businesses. So that tells people very clearly what the intention or the goal for that group is. And people can say, yes, that's for me, or no, that's not for me. You know, there's, there's a different outcome that I want. And of course, this is a big one. You need to determine your price. So there are different ways of determining the price. You can either look at it in from an hourly point of view. So let's say, for example, um, your normal hourly rate would be three hundred dollars, and you've worked everything out. You've worked out your agenda, and you've figured out that running this mastermind group is gonna take about five hours of your time in the month. Okay, so that means five hours times $300, that means you wanna be earning $1,500 a month, right? So how are you gonna do that? Let's say you have five people in the group, you would charge them each $300. So that's one way of, of looking at um, at pricing and that is just one way I'm just giving you some different ideas because everybody will have you know come up with their own way of doing it but that's one way of doing things and remembering that if you do it that way they're getting to interact with you at a really reduced rate instead of having to pay you hourly so that's one way of looking at at that way of determining price then of course you can have a low cost offering which means that you would want to have a bigger group. And as I said to you before, a bigger group comes with its own, um, with its own kind of, not challenges, but there's a different way of looking at a bigger group. Um, so I personally am not crazy about the big, big group model, but that's just me personally, because I like to be able to give my attention to everybody. Um, but that would mean that people would need to break out. And as I said, they wouldn't all get your attention, but you might want to have a low cost group. And let's say, for example, you'd be charging them 49 US dollars. When I talk about dollars, by the way, I'm talking US dollars, but you guys in Canada will have an idea of, of what that means to you. And then there's a third way of looking at determining your pricing, and that is package offerings. Um, which is something completely different. So masterminds are not all identical. I'm going to give you um, the outline of an agenda, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be exactly what you're going to use. That's just something that I'm proposing to you. And it's a way of getting you to think about it. But some people offer packages. I mean, you get mastermind groups that cost... Um, 15 to 30,000 US dollars to join. They're really, really expensive, but then they're getting like two retreats a year. They're getting guest speakers. They're getting additional resources. So it all depends on what your offering is going to be. You need to determine your pricing according to what you're offering. Are you offering just your um, weekly calls, for example, or every other week or once a month? Or are you offering something additional like a training? You can offer a training in addition. A mastermind group is not a training, but you can offer a training resource or any other resource. And so you would need to price accordingly. Then you need to set ground rules. As I mentioned before, this is really important that everybody is aware of ground rules when they join the mastermind group, like from the get go, they need to know what your ground rules are. So this would be things like the frequency of your meetings. Um, so how often are you going to meet, as I said, once a week, every other week, once a month, that's up to you to determine depending on what you want to offer. How long are your meetings going to be an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, again, it's very dependent on what it is you want to offer. Um, talk about the group size, like we're not going to, the maximum number of people in this group is going to be eight people, you know, let them know from the, from the get go. Um, your agenda, which we're going to talk about, and then uh, commitment is also really, really important. A mastermind group is not going to work for somebody if they don't show up, and they're not committed to the process. 
um, it's not going to help a participant who comes once a month or every second meeting. You really need people who are invested in the process and who really want to grow and um, who are committed to the process. Um, Aaron, are you open for a question? I sure am, Roger. How do you deal with confidentiality? So actually, we were, I was just going to talk about confidentiality. That's really an important part of this, as I mentioned before. People need to feel safe. You need to be able to build trust in your group. And this is something that you need to, you need to make part of your ground rules, actually. I was just going to read through this list with you guys um, on things that you could discuss. This is just uh, a kind of template of what you could discuss, but there's so many different things. And of course, confidentiality is top of the list. So I'm gonna, is it just the one question you have, Roger? Correct. Okay, so then I can just go straight into this because that's exactly what we're talking about. You're gonna need to make it very clear to people that what is discussed in the group is confidential and that it's not taken outside of the group. They need to respect that and it needs to be a boundary that's set right from the beginning. Um, as I said to you, you could discuss this when you do a, an orientation with people. Other people uh, who run mastermind groups get people to sign a form. So I'll give you an example of that as well. But confidentiality to me is top of the list. You want people to come into the group and feel free to talk about whatever they need to talk about, knowing that it's not going to be discussed outside of the group because people will talk about sensitive things, whether it's personal growth, you know, whether it's um, business, people are going to be discussing really personal things. Um, another rule could be follow the structure and timekeeping of the facilitator. So for you as a facilitator, that's part of your role is to keep time. You know that you have X amount of time allocated to each item on your agenda and you need to make sure that this is followed. So you need to kind of keep people within that time. And then an example of some group core values could be safety. So as I mentioned before, that really ties in with confidentiality, that this is a safe place to come and talk about where you need help in your business, mm -hmm. maybe where you've had a failure or made a mistake, it's okay to come to the group and discuss that it's safe. Respecting one another is also paramount. Treat one another with respect. You know, with groups of people, we don't always agree with people and um, we need to be able to handle that like adults. Um, I've, I did a uh, training, an in-person training quite recently and this is the first time this has ever happened to me in all my years of training and we had a situation in the class in the training room where it just escalated between two participants who didn't agree on something so quickly and so this kind of thing happens and um, it's something that you as a facilitator needs to handle so respect is paramount honesty um, you need to be able to give honest feedback. If people are not receiving honest feedback and honest guidance, you're not really able to help them. It's, it needs to be a place where people can come and be vulnerable and show their most vulnerable side, whether it's business, you know, whatever the topic is, um, and be able to say, you know, I'm really struggling with X, Y, and Z, and it's okay. There's no judgment and equality. Everybody in the group is equal. And it's important to make this known from the beginning. No one's better or worse or higher or lower. Everybody is on an equal footing once they step into the group. So that's just one example. And then this is an example of a written agreement. Um, I will keep everything that is shared during the mastermind experience within the container of the mastermind unless I get express permission to share it outside of the group. Number two, I will give just as much or even more than I receive. Number three, I will receive with grace and without defensiveness. 
And number four, I understand this isn't a group for self-promotion or pitching. So these are just examples of um, ground rules that you could set and different ways of communicating those ground rules, whether you're doing that, as I said, through an orientation or whether you want to have a written agreement with people in the group. Um, right. Another thing you need to decide on is technology. Today, I think most of us use Zoom, but there are people who like to use Teams. Whatever it is, you need to decide on which technology you are going to use for your mastermind groups. And then here it is, invite, oh, sorry, invite the right people. Gosh, this is so pivotal to the success of the group is having the right people in the group. And when I say the right people, I mean the, the people in the group need to be peers. Um, they need to be working towards the same goal. They need to have a similar vision or want to attain something similar. So, and they need to be peers as in, let me give you an example. You wouldn't invite um, somebody who is a startup, for example, and they've been operating their new business for, let's say, a year or under a year, and somebody who's been running a business for 10 years, um, has 500 staff members, you wouldn't put those two people in a group together because there's not really going to be a lot of value for the man or woman who's been running the their business for 10 years and they've grown to the extent that they've grown there's not going to be much value uh, for them aside from being able to help <laughs> the person who's a startup but there's not really much that they can get out of that so this is a very very critical part of making a successful mastermind group is that you do actually have peers people need to be willing to share and teach um, they have to be open to giving and receiving, in other words. Um, they need to be transparent. You can't get the right feedback if you're not going to be transparent about what it is you need. You really want people who are growth oriented in your group. This is really important. People who want to grow, people who are willing to do whatever it takes to grow, who are motivated and driven. Um, to do that. People who are not expecting you as the group to carry them and grow them, but they're willing to do the work that needs to be done. And that speaks to internal locus of control. So your internal locus of control is where um, I know that I'm in control of my life. Um, I'm in control of my destiny. Um, the consequences of what I do are because I did that certain thing. I'm not blaming others. So internal locus of control is a lot of self-responsibility and you want people who are willing to take responsibility for their own actions and who are not always blaming externally. Um, people who have a positive mindset because you are, although people are coming to the group and they're presenting their problems and challenges, um, that's not what you want to focus on. Although a lot of time is spent on that, it's spent on solving the problems. So you don't want to get into a situation where all people are doing is complaining about their problems and it becomes, it becomes not a growth environment uh, at that point. You want to present, they need to present the problem and then you want people who have a positive mindset and say, hey, I have a solution. This is what I did when that happened to me. Or this is what I would do. Um, I talked about motivated and driven, ability to build trust with others. This is critical. If you don't, if there isn't trust in the group, people are not going to be open. They're not going to open up. And if they don't open up, they are not going to benefit what they could benefit out of the group. You want people who are problem solvers because that's really what's happening in the group is you're solving or they are solving problems and challenges. You want participants who are willing to try new things. So people who are not just stuck in their comfort zone and not willing to move out, but they're willing to step out a little bit because growth doesn't happen right there in your comfort zone as we know. 
and then uh, respect opinions of others. This is so important. We don't have to always agree with the opinions of others, but we do need to have a level of respect for others. So you want to, when you are um, interviewing, if you're going to be interviewing people, you want to look out, you know, you want to look out for these particular things and whatever else you think is important to you. Um, Dylan, did I answer your question? Great, thank you. Okay, so you could, no problem. So you could, there are different ways of, of handling this. You could either have an online form that they fill in or you could actually interview people. I like the idea of interviewing people because that way you kind of get a vibe and you can get a sense, a better sense of who they are, but you can also have an online form. And here are some suggested questions that you could ask. What are your top three goals you want to achieve in the next 12 months? How much do you want to earn in the next 12 months? How do you feel this group will help you achieve your goals? And why should we accept your application to join this group? So these are just a suggestion so that you can get an idea of where they're at and what they're thinking about and where they want to go so that you can fit, you can have the right fit of people um, in, in your group. Right, and then agenda is important. You have a limited amount of time. <clears throat> Excuse me, you have a limited amount of time. So you want to set an agenda and stick to the time allocated to each item on your agenda. That way you're respecting everybody's time. So I have um, a suggested agenda here. You can start out with victories and successes. So what did you achieve uh, last week? And then I would go into the four questions. And the four questions are, what is the big goal that you're working towards for the next 12 months? Um, what was the action you said you would take last week? Did you achieve? what you wanted to achieve last week, according to that action, and what did you learn from that? So those are the four questions. And by the way, I can send you an agenda, but we'll talk about that at the end. Um, your hot seat, as I said, this is the part of the uh, session where people get to bring their challenges and um, they get to get input from everybody in the group as to how to handle those challenges and what solutions. So you would give the group member an opportunity to explain what their challenge is. Then you would ask them for clarity, just clarify it so that you understand it and that everybody understands it. Check with the group and see whether anybody needs um, clarity, further clarity, let the group ask clarifying questions and once everyone is clear on what the challenge actually is so that they're able to give relevant input, you can then move to um, each person giving their input. Once the hot seats are finished, you can set, each person would then get an opportunity to set an objective for the next week. I'm assuming you're meeting weekly here. So you would set your objective for the next meeting and what the next step is you need to take and then confirm the next hot seat participants. So it's pretty straightforward. And then what is your role as the facilitator? Um, because you have all this input coming from everybody, but you have a very pivotal role. You are the initiator of the group. You are the one who needs to run the group and you, you're basically leading this group. So you have a very pivotal role in the group. First of all, I think synergy is really important. And Stephen Covey said the synergy is better than my way or your way, it's our way. So it's all about people working together. Synergy is um, when the outcome of the group as a whole is greater than the outcome of the sum of each of its parts. So in other words, what can be achieved together as a group is more than what can be achieved by each individual on their own and put together. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. 
Um, so this is very important that you check on the synergy of the group and that things are working smoothly, that people are working well together. Um, there are many components to synergy and we can't really go into that in depth now, but this is something that's part of your role is just check that people are working uh, together and not working against one another. Um, communication, of course, is part of your role. You are the lead communicator. And although input is first coming from everybody in the group, and then you're giving your input, you are still the lead communicator and you're the kind of barrier where there are any problems. Uh, you're the fixer upper. Um, and then accountability, you need to make sure that there is accountability, um, that there is an accountability component in the agenda that I propose to you, accountability is actually written in there. But if you don't have it written into your agenda, it's not written in as accountability, but it's written in as, as the steps in the agenda. Um, make sure that there is an accountability component. Otherwise, people are not going to achieve what they could achieve. They're not going to achieve the potential that they could. Good the question group. for you, Karen. Yeah. What is the what consequences does the group impose on someone who fails to consistently meet a commitment? Um, so when you say fails to consistently meet a commitment, like their own commitment, not the commitment of showing up, but they, uh, they achieve their, their objectives. They, they yeah. set an objective and they consistently miss it. What, yeah. what does the group do? What is the punishment? What is the consequence? The consequence. Um, I would ask them what is keeping them from achieving, like consistently achieving what they want to achieve and be honest about it. This is the whole idea of having safety in the group, confidentiality, being open and honest, is be honest about it. Confront them, not in a confrontational manner when I say confront, but raise it. Bring it up with them and ask them, what do they think the problem is? Try and, and dig into it. And um, then hear from them whether it's something that they're willing to change and ask them what they would need to do to change that. Thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Okay, so group dynamics of a high performing group, you as the facilitate, facilitator can just check up. You can do like a mental check in for yourself um, as you're running your group. Do the group members openly and readily disclose their opinions? Are people being open? Um, are meetings compelling and productive? Because guess what? If they're not, people are going to start dropping out of the group. And do group members hold one another accountable? And I said your accountability <laughs> would come up um, consistently in this. So are there no other questions before I give away my giveaway? No further questions. OK. So with that, of course, that was a, pretty much an, an overview uh, of how to start your mastermind group and really what it's all about because we have limited time but i hope that's given you some food for thought and to give you some more food for thought i have a giveaway for everybody who's here and anybody who may watch this actually before this date is also welcome to join um, i'd like to offer you a free mastermind session on Thursday morning, Thursday, the 22nd of April at 9 a.m. So this is your invitation to that session and we can hang out together and actually do a mastermind so that Aaron, you can- what, uh, what time zone is that, 9 a.m.? It's uh, Pacific time. Thank you. Okay. So 9 a.m. Pacific time. Is that, Roger, is that too early for some people, do you think? No, no, that's fine. Okay, because I'm just thinking there were other time zones here and you're more familiar <laughs> with what they are, but they'd be later, wouldn't they? Yeah, 9 a.m. Pacific is uh, noon New York. So okay. it's a good time for everyone in North America. Okay, great. Just checking that, yeah, you. I think you're kind of in the earliest time zone away from me. Correct. Okay. So 9 a.m. Pacific time. Um, 
That is 6 p.m. Central European time, but there's no one from Europe in here. Um, and yeah, you're very welcome to join. And the way that we would need to go about doing this is you would need to contact me because the link is quite long. It's a Zoom registration form that you'd need to fill in and it needs to be clickable for you to, you know, just to work well for ease of use. Um, the best way to do it is just drop me an email at karen at karenfenter.com. So it's not a difficult email. Um, it's just my name. Thank you, Roger. Uh, yeah, so it's karen at karenfenter.com. Um, just drop me an email and you can put in the header or the topic um, mastermind giveaway and then in the content of the email just your name your first name and surname that's it and i'll respond to you i'll send you the link and we'll take it from there so you don't need to get into a long winded um, i'm not expecting you to write me a long winded email but if you would like to and the other questions you have you are also most welcome to to contact me so this is where you can contact me as i say uh, just going back, just to remind you of the date. It's Thursday, the 22nd of April, which is the upcoming Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And we'll have a lot of fun. We'll work through the agenda um, that I propose to you guys. That's the agenda that we'll work through. And you can see exactly how it works and how very cool it is. And um, so... Yes, hopefully I'll see some of you there. So please just drop me a line if you do want to join and I will get that link off to you. Karen, uh, thank you very, very much for the um, depth and breadth of information you've just shared with us about mastermind groups. Uh, I have been in several mastermind groups and, and a, a testament to the value that I received uh, and I believe gave to the other members of the group. Uh, as you say, synergy is everything when it comes to mastermind groups. Uh, thank you for putting uh, flesh on the bones of how to set up, uh, operate uh, a mastermind group in order for its members to get the maximum return on their time and cash invested in that mastermind group. Uh, you've done us proud. On behalf of EIN, 76-ish thousand members, uh, I thank you enormously. Thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, Roger. I, I didn't, I meant to thank you right in the beginning, but thank you so much for the opportunity and really all of you who've shown up today, thank you for being here.